Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with J-Man Seminars, and welcome to the Winner's Table sponsored by McKissick. We are, it is our pleasure today to bring you, hold on, let's give her a round of applause first. It is our pleasure to bring to you Sherry Johnson, CEO of Sherry Johnson Coaching. Sherry, thank you for being here with us today from sunny Florida. You got away just in time to miss the snow here in the Northeast. <laughs> Thanks. I know, I know. Thanks for having me. So good to be here and so good to see you. I'm excited about today. This is cool. Yeah, Thanks. you know, and I'm super excited to have you on because here at the Winner's Table, we get to interview real estate rock stars from all over the planet Earth. Uh, and you are a rock star that started right from the very beginning. Sometimes there's people who have coaching companies who have never been in real estate before. We know who they are. and uh, But we're not going to talk about them today. <laughs> Uh, but let, let's talk about, for those who don't know you, maybe a little bit of introduction, who you are, what you do, and then we'll, we'll go like rewind right in, in, in the beginning there with Sherry. Absolutely. So yeah. I'm Sherry Johnson, national real estate coach, speaker, consultant. And, um, I started Sherry Johnson coaching in 2017 and, um, I've been in real estate for 24 years managing broker and um, active agent. Um, I also was an agent, so I know how hard uh, agents work. I was a top agent in Cleveland, Ohio um, for many years, about 10 years, managed agents. Um, I'll get into that in a, in a few minutes, but um, I have two kids. My uh, daughter, Tori, is 16, and my son, Matthew, is 13, and they are just fabulous little human beings that inspire me every day. And uh, yeah, I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, born and raised and love the North Coast and shout out to everybody uh, all over, but in Cleveland for sure. And um, I'm actually affiliated uh, with the awesome Berkshire Hathaway Home Services professional real estate uh, group. And we are network and we are in uh, 650 agents strong in the state of Ohio and a couple other surrounding states. But um Love real estate, and it's been an, it's been an awesome twenty five, almost twenty five years. It's hard to believe. Awesome, Cleveland rocks, right? I mean, that's that's one of that's the. It does. Yeah, it oh, totally yes. does. And what what a resurgence for a city in the last. Well, maybe you had something to do with that. I would imagine, right? <laughs> the last fifteen or twenty years, um, really just really changed, and uh, it's a cool city. I've been there a couple times, and I love it. I love it. Thanks. So let's Thanks. let's start it in the beginning where you, you you first we don't have to well I guess you could say when you got started but um, when you first started in real estate what what prompted you to get started in real estate and then like what were some of your keys to success? So this is a kind of funny story. My parents um, were building a house and I met um, the builder's son. I ended up dating him for a while and. Um, his father used to say, you need to get your real estate license, kid. You should be selling houses. And I was, I had grown up in a commercial printing company that uh, my parents started um, in 1966, and um, which is a great success story in itself. And I would say to him, you know, I sell printing and we have a family business, but okay. For two years, he said, get your real estate license, sell real estate. Um, and we ended up... Um, my parents sold their company and I got into consulting and sales training and I was doing a lot of management consulting and, and, and um, strategic planning and, and uh, sales management training for companies. And I ended up getting my real estate license and my mom actually is the one who pushed me over and said, just go get it. Um, you have it, you'll have it in your portfolio, just get your license. And so um, I was getting my license. Um, I was 26 we knew really nothing about real estate and I didn't really know anyone who was in real estate at all. Right. right. Um, and so the funny thing, uh, Jay man is that my dad said to me, like, you might want to get another job because you oh. may not sell a house for six months. Right. Get a real job. Maybe. No. <laughs> he, well, he said, you might like, you know, want it because we knew nothing about, like I didn't know how to get leads. Or, so I had written a business plan in, when I was at Hondras College, and um, you know, it was hysterical because I I said to him like, if I don't sell a house in six months, I'm not doing this. This will be a epic fail, and I'll do something else. It won't be a career for me. So I had a um, 
I was 26. I had a really high shopping habit. I had a condo payment and I had um, a car payment. And like, I still have the shopping habit today, I'm sure. So, but I said to him, like, I have no choice. Like, I don't, I'm not asking you for money and I'm just going to go do this. And so for fear, out of fear of failure, um, I sold like 27 houses my first year. I think it was like three and a half million dollars or some crazy thing. But I had five sales my first month, you know, and um, and only one of those came from my sphere. And and so people who are new, it's like you can you can do anything. Um, I most of the people I met were open houses and people that didn't know me. They didn't know I had just gotten my license. Um, so basically, that's how I got started. And um, you know, after I think it was. Um, in 1997, after my first full year, I had gone to some Howard Britton conferences and I went to those for 10 years and I loved Howard Britton star power. And I'm a huge fan of all the, the people I still know today that, and that are in our coaching program that were from Howard Britton star power. It's just been amazing. But I said, I want to have a national speaking coaching and consulting company in 1997. And I am so proud of the fact that 20 years later, um, after a long career with a fabulous company, I was able to do that. And it's been, it's been, it's been amazing. So, um, but it's kind of cool. You can do whatever you want, right? You can right. say, I'm going to be a $2 million dollar agent and then go do it. You kind of have to, you have to begin with that and manifest it and make it happen. So, um, that's how I got into real estate and I have not looked back since. So not everybody hits the ground running like that. What were some of your, you know, like open houses? Was that your thing? What were your strategies at open houses? Were you just good at talking with people? Just listen, I, I got to buy a new purse or some shoes this weekend. I need you to come <laughs> over here. Like <laughs> what was, what was the yeah. conversations like? So I wrote out a six page or seven page business plan. And I remember taking it to, um, the first company I started with was, um, Smythe Kramer company. And the training director was like, I, I've never seen a new age of write a plan like this, but I had been in, in, um, business, you know, school. I had, um, been in business. And so right. to me, I had to have a strategy fast if I was going to, you know, pay my condo payment and, um, you know, be able to pay my bills. That was the first, the real first motivator was to be on stage with all of the top agents that I saw on stage. So I was one of those agents that was motivated by sheer, like performance addiction. Like I'm going to do that. And I'm, I don't know whether I wanted to prove my dad wrong or I wanted to, right show my parents I could do this or what, but I just self motivated driven. But a lot of it, I, you know, I found it easy um, to jump into this business. And if you add value, you know, my parents always told me if you add value, people will hire you. If you don't add any value, you're not getting hired. And so I differentiated myself very quickly that um, I was, I, I presented myself as best in class. I acted like I was a top agent. I just, morphed into that's what I want to be. And I looked at the top agents in my office who were fabulous mentors. And um, I presented myself and my services in a way that, um, you know, was as good as the other people in my office. I was lucky. I had a, a, a guy by the name of Alan Chandler who said to me, you're a top agent in your office. And I said, Alan, I haven't, he was our vice president of advertising and marketing. And I said, Alan, I haven't sold a house yet. And he said, Sherry Johnson, listen to me, you are a top agent in your office. And I said, Alan, I'm going to be, um, but I haven't sold a house yet. And he said to me a third time, he said, listen to what I this said. This is Sherry. <laughs> and he repeated to me, he yeah. said, you are a top agent in your office. You have the, the same exact marketing tools, technology tools, um, value proposition as every other agent in your office. They've just been doing it longer. And I got to tell you, um, Jeremy, I walked out of that meeting with my head up and my confidence level spiked through the roof. And that's how I presented myself as I'm just as good as everyone in here. And it's, it, it changed. Um, I think that helped in the meteoric uh, success that I had. Open houses for sale by owners, expired listings. Um, and really your sphere was like the last thing I wanted to, to deal with or call but just complete strangers. Every single place I went, I, I would convert leads um, I convert people, you know, like by a conversation and um, create new client relationships with every single person. I did that even as I became a manager and executive, I would drum up $8 million of referrals every year for people. Um, 
in my office <laughs> because that's what I just do, right? It's just, it's in, it's, it's in us. So. Well, I, I like what you but, said, you know, when, when you left there and you're like, well, yeah, you're right. I can do this too. And I think that's a struggle for a lot of new agents. The confidence isn't there. And if you're watching this, you know, you need to think like, why not you? The only difference, just like Sherry said, the only difference between you and a top producer is they started 10 years ago or 15 or 20 or whatever the case may be, you will be. And, and I know deep in her heart, Sherry doesn't know this, but she wanted to be on the winner's table in 2021. This was one of the things she said back in 97. She didn't even know it existed, but she was like, someday I'm going to be on the winner's table. And so we're, we're so happy to, to have you here to share this story. But let's talk a little bit about as your business progressed, right? You get a little bit busier. And I think that's where, you know, agents reach a certain point, depending on, you know, you're in a mid, mid-level market as far as pricing is concerned. So that number of transactions di is different for everybody. But there's a point where your business starts to kind of falter because you can't handle the volume and the service. And like, at what point did you realize you need help? Yes. And I, um, so I, had hired like a part-time person. I was terrified to keep them busy coming from a family business. I knew what overhead would be like. I knew the responsibilities of hiring people and keeping them busy. And um, so I would hire people. And I finally realized that um, someone said to me, um, if you want to double your business, you have to go on twice as many appointments, which seems so easy. And, and in theory, common sense. right. 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 And so I said, all right, well, if I'm going to do that, I really have to leverage my time. And so, again, Howard Britton Star Power and, and others, um, you know, even my manager at the time, you know, you need to hire someone. And so I, I did it. I jumped in the deep end. I hired uh, a few staff, actually. And so I never had a, a large team, um, but I had a support team. And so these folks, these gals were instrumental in doing all of the behind the scenes work. Um, so that I could just go on more appointments and the more appointments I went on, the more business I did. And I just, that's all I wanted to do was, sh you know, show houses to the people I wanted to show, um, list, go on listing appointments. That's all I did go on listing appointments and negotiate sales. And, and so by the time I had, um, my daughter, I think I worked nine months, sold 14 or $15 million in real estate. And, um, you know, I was pregnant the whole time with her. And I worked maybe 30 to 30 to 40 hours a week just because I had such a built such a well-oiled machine right. that it was walk in with listings and walk out with listing appointment materials. And that's just, I mean, we had everything had a system. And um, I think agents who, you know, the, the 18 or $20,000 I spent, or maybe it was 25 at the end, a year for one person, each person, um, that $50,000 leveraged me to be able to, you know, do more business and, and make more money. It paid for itself. It gave me the, the time that I wanted both personally and more time to go on more appointments. So it's, it's one of those moments in, in, I say to agents all the time, when you are stuck and plateauing, if you don't disrupt something or change something in your behavior, and, and a lot of times that is getting out of the way and realizing I don't have to do everything. I can, I can offload a lot of marketing, digital, social media marketing, someone else. I can, I can offload uh, paperwork, for example. And so we have to get our ego out of the way and just say, I have to be a good delegator, whether I want to or not, or I'm never going to scale. So what was that process like? Did, and and it's, I would say it's very different now because that might have been what, like early 2000s or so. Yeah. I think with technology now so much greater, everything can be done remotely. It's probably even cheaper now. But like the saying goes, don't step over dollars to make pennies. Dollars. Yeah. Something, something along yeah. those lines where they're like, oh, yeah. it's, it's going to cost me money, but it's more of an investment. And it, the return on that investment is, is so much better. But how did you decide who would be a best a, the best fit because I think some people hire people who are just like them right. and others do it the right way maybe it's somebody who compliments their personalities or where their weak weak points are Let's speak a little bit on that yeah you know, I learned um well I'd hired a lot of people previously um in my former jobs um and career that I had um at a printing company I can tell you I used the DISC personality DISC to hire someone not like me purpose and um, to hire someone who Excellent. was detail oriented.
oriented <laughs> who right. liked doing the same, you know, routine work every day. Thank goodness that they like doing that and they like checklists and systems. I don't. Um, huh. I overcompensate because I want the client experience to be phenomenal, you know, and, and it's just like a wedding, you know, when there's one thing that's bad at the wedding, everyone remembers that one thing that went wrong. And right. so I wanted someone who was going to be extremely high attention to detail um, and be methodical and analytical and have amazing customer service all at the same time and pick up all those those things I lack and I still lack today, right? So I have um, very uh, forward, like I'm so forward thinking, I, the people literally have to be supporting you from, you know, follow up to, um, you know, just making you look good every time. And it's a team effort. Um, when I hired this person, you know, I, you can get the DISC uh, test or profile for or free. personality um, yeah, for free. And just go on, Google it. I know uh, Tony Robbins offers that and, and several others. What's great about that is you learn about yourself and how you communicate and in some ways poorly to clients. Um, sometimes I have to learn, you know, to like not talk as much if you're dealing with a certain per personality. So the profiling um, and that profile DISC is so good for an agent for so many things. Hiring an agent or a, a, a team member, a licensed professional assistant, or hiring um, uh, buyers agents or anybody else that's on your team, use the DISC. I, I think you'll really benefit from that. Um, I hired first. I hired people outside of the industry because I, you know, someone said to me, "You have to hire somebody who needs you as much as you need them." And so, hiring your friend okay. from the office doesn't work because if they don't have to work. You're going to be frustrated. They're going to think this is a fun hobby job. And I, I hate to say it like that, but it's the truth. Um, and so someone who has who is, who is has to have a job with you and they need you as much as you need them. Someone at, at Howard Burton taught me that. And, you know, and, and then from that, uh, I ended up getting some of those people licensed. Um, I ended up having, I think, you know, a couple of people licensed. No one sold. Um, I tried hiring buyer's agents uh, on and off and I would hire someone and it, it, it didn't work out for whatever reasons. Um, some might have been my own, um, but I know that- um, <laughs> I wasn't going to say the, the it. We, uh, I wasn't going to say the it. Team, <laughs> yeah, the teams we coach today, those that are trying to break through that um, and, and you know, you have to have enough listings if you're going to hire people. But right. if you're hiring support staff, we have this whole questionnaire about what kind of team do you want and- why do you want a team? Is it is it to leverage your time, or do you really want to have people that um, you manage? And so I remember, um, I remember one of the Hannahs saying to me, "Do what you growing a team? Why don't you just manage one of our offices?" And I was like, "Yes, I want to do that." So it was it's kind of cool to um, to transition out of you know ten to eighteen million dollars of sales every year, and um, and then and then go help people do what I did, which was create a lot of, you know, people selling a lot of houses. So very fun. But I think you have to, I think, you, you, I don't think agents make the mistake of waiting. And in that waiting is lost opportunity. So you're never going to have the perfect system in place before you hire somebody. Um, I also think they make the mistake of hiring people too quickly too. So um, ask yourself, do I need help first and support? Because I'm so busy and you know you have to have that admin person first that's the first person to hire and then from there you can you can really grow your team and, and scale your business somebody told me once hire slowly fire fast yeah, correct you know and and so would you say like if you're looking at the disc or like enneagram is a good one lately i've, I've been thinking where they tell yeah. you how how people are so it gives you so much insight into yourself as well and how you're motivated and how you motivate others, et cetera. What yes. would you say oh, yeah. like the admin personalities SC typically, and then like the rainmakers you're, I'm guessing, but you're probably like a DI a lot like me, like, just give me, I need to, I need deals all day. I just want to do deals all day. I don't want to see paperwork. Here's the paperwork. I almost want to talk to clients, right? That's right. I'm a DI and, and I hire SCs. Perfect. Still. <laughs> Still. Yeah, my people are probably more DIs, but I do hire SCs for. Admin. Well, and and it makes so much sense because sometimes SCs when they want to be a rainmaker, it's hard because they're like, "Hold on, I got to finish my paperwork and oh, I got to get this." And it's just like, 
let's go already. We got the appointment. You know, it's, no, that's yeah. It doesn't it, somebody's got to be leading the charge at, up front? So when um, you got into management, and because we may have people, I guess if you're a team leader, but also if you're a manager manager of people or uh, managing a broker, or there's so many like mom and pop small brokerages out there. What what kind of strategies would you give them in managing people? I think two questions here. One, if you're a manager who's not selling or like in the mom and pop shops, the manager, the broker owner has to sell to keep the doors open. Uh, you know, what, what's some advice for them? Well, if you're not selling, um, top line revenue is the key. So always having a, a a plan to increase listings, increase sales, increase opportunities for your agents, um, whether that's through lead gen or just driving the business by coaching your agents. I mean, what I was able to do with a team of great managers um, was, you know, drive, I don't know, 250 million a year in sales increases for four years. I mean, if you have a plan and you say, okay, top line revenue is our goal, expansion, market share, um, whatever those KPIs are, those key performance indicators, you know, if you're managing the people, like people right. don't need to be managed, they need to be led. And managers need to manage yes. themselves with their time. And then they can lead people. And so I think what happens is our sales management throughout the country has um, usually became a manager because as many of them told me they wanted a salary job instead of a commission. Right. And then, which, you know, and then no one gave them the skills to actually be sales managers. And so if you are the sales manager, I'm going to, I'm going to remind you that your number one job is to increase sales and, and drive sales revenue and top line revenue can come from two ways. One, growing the people you already have, taking a person who's doing two and a half million and get them to five million taking a $5 million agent and helping them grow to 8 million. Um, and the second way to drive top line revenue is recruiting, recruiting and coaching your agents will drive your top line revenue. And when top line revenue goes up, it all falls to the bottom line and net profit goes up. And so right. um, if you're a manager that's selling and you like that, that's great. Sometimes it's difficult to recruit people. Right. Uh, agents don't always want to feel like they're, missing opportunities yeah, yeah. because they don't trust that the, the managers giving them any opportunities because they're taking all the good ones. Um, but I see a lot of companies now, you know, that the, the broker sells, the manager sells and, and they have transparency and that's great. But if you're selling, you can't, you have a hard time doing both. So I feel like um, if you want to scale, if you want to grow your operation, you need to replace yourself. And that way you can be the brain maker who's growing the entire group. See, I wanted to go from selling five or six houses a month, you know, on a good month, eight to 10 a month to selling 30 to 50 as a manager. Cause I looked at all those transactions as mine, you know, they were right. partly mine. They were my agents, of course. Right. But, and then when I went to a bigger office with 150 people, it was like 150 transactions a month, 250 transactions a month. And then as I became, um, you know, a, a regional manager and I had 13 offices and 750 agents, it was 6,000 transactions or so or more even yeah. a year. And you look at all of that as you own that. And so as a manager or a sales manager or a regional VP or whatever your title is, doesn't even matter, your, your sole purpose is to increase and drive more sales and increase your agent's productivity and, and top peak performance. So I think people who are selling, that's great if that's where you want to be. If your plan is to um, grow, then you got to replace. You really do need to hire a manager or talk to me about it or talk to anybody about it. I'm happy to help you. But, you know, the the hiring the right manager, I mean, that's a pivotal, the most important position is that is the manager of each office. And again, they're sales managers. They're not sitting at their desk. Uh, J-Man waiting for transaction questions to come in. Right. Right. <laughs> They're actually going out in the bullpen and saying, what are you working on? Right. How many appointments do you have this week? You know, what's in your pipeline? And I think that's, that would be a huge twist and turnaround, you know, have sales meetings that drive sales instead of 
sales meetings that don't have any value. So I think you can you can be real pivotal uh, in the management <laughs> side of this to to increase your agents. I mean, I we've taken people from six to sixty million in five years. That's fun. That's a that's a blast, you know. And and if you're the manager, that person is going to be like. I have such a business partnership with my manager. I'm never leaving. It's a retention tool. It's a recruiting tool. It just works. And that's, that's what we teach people to do. So um, that's my advice. My little advice there. No, that's excellent. Cause it's like, it's not really, you know, guys, if you're a sales manager, you're supposed to manage sales. Holy cow. <laughs> no admin, no admin. I, I tell managers that's admin have somebody else do that. Right. right. That's not right. your job to look at deals. Right. You know, Absolutely. Like, like, so let, let's um, kind of come into the, to our time limit here and I want to be respectful of your time, but let, I'm a new agent right now. I'm watching this. I want to someday be on the winner's table, just like Sherry. What, <laughs> what, what should I be, you know, concentrating on? I mean, it's, we're seeing the seller, a seller's market. I think like we've never seen, I've been in it 16 years. You've been in longer, crazy, obviously, you know, Houses for sale is way down everywhere we talk. And if you're watching this and it's not down in your market, please holler at us because we have buyers for you. <laughs> but um, what should I be concentrating on uh, as a newer agent, existing agent, as a seasoned agent, right? Three phases, let's say. Yeah, and I think um, it's a great question. So, you know, we, I used to coach agents, we still coach new agents to do four to six million their first year and a $200,000 price point. Uh, if you're in the coast, wherever you are, you know, whether your average sale price is 500, a million or, or 250 or 200 or under 200, have a plan. The first thing you have to do is decide how many deals you need, how many houses at this price, at this commission rate, at my commission split equal the amount of money I have to make. I would say we do this in three ways, have to make, would like to make, and would love to make stretch goal. And then divide that and figure out how many transactions is that. Now you know how many houses you need to sell every month and how many appointments you need to have every week in order to achieve that. And I think what happens, agents get, um, it's a, a coworker of mine from Howard Hanna, his name's Wayne, Wayne Gould, said, used to say, we're getting ready to get ready, okay? And <laughs> so you gotta stop getting ready to yeah. get ready because in action, is a week goes by and you have no sales. Another week goes by and you have no appointments and you have nothing in your pipeline. And so you have to jump in immediately into prospecting mode and you know whether to figure out where you're going to get your leads from. Um, once you've figured that out, and there's so many ways, uh, fill the pipeline. You know whether you're a new agent or existing agent who's sort of in a slump, or you're an existing agent and want to double or triple your business. Yeah, you have to have a full pipeline, and that doesn't mean two to five people. That means like 50 people you're having conversations with about moving. And when you have that many people in your pipeline, now you're going to be selling four to six houses a month. And that's, you know, we teach this uh, system called the gold mine pipeline. And it's exactly what I did to go from seven to 14 million. And um, you have to have a full pipeline. Doesn't matter if people are six to 12 months out, put them on your pipeline, fill your pipeline with leads, it will create predictable and consistent monthly income. Um, if you don't have any, if you have four to six people and none of them happen this month, right? We have a zero for the month because life happens and those four to six people, there's no guarantee they're all gonna list this month. And so when you don't, when you have a short, short pipeline, uh, you're really, it's, it's dangerous because you have like three eggs in the basket. So you have to have, and you probably have, and you don't even realize if you monetize the value of all the people you're talking to and all those leads or like what I like to call them new client relationships and you monetize how many people I, I, I used to obsess over this. I, I think I still do. Um, you know, how many would list with me? How many would buy with me? Right. And you add up the volume and you say, I have $10 million just like that. And, and so many times I see agents faces that they're like, I didn't even know I had this much. So, you probably have more than you realize if you stop discounting the people who say they're not ready right now. Put them all on your list and follow up with them. The fortune is in the follow-up. Second thing I'm gonna say is go after listings. 
as whether there's a shortage of listings, pandemic, financial crisis, it doesn't matter what condition we're in, what market we're in, you have to have listings to be successful in this business. So listing agents last and they make the most money and you've, you'll see it if you look around, every top agent is a high volume listing agent. So um, instead of saying there's nothing in the MLS, you know, go right. find the listings, you know, you can go out and find listings. <clears throat> it just looks different. Stop waiting for people to call you, you know, go out and market yourself in a farm neighborhood, go out and um, actually knock on doors or call people that you don't know. Um, if you offer a valuable solution and help them with this huge thing called buying or selling a house, they'll, they'll want to talk to you. Um, but you have to, two things, full pipeline, and you have to go after listings and the rest will follow and you'll be, you'll be, you'll be killing it before you know it. You'll be just crushing it in real estate. As my friend Anthony Lamacchia says, crushing it. <laughs> crushing it in real estate. So work in your awesome. pipeline. Going after the listings, you got a list of last. We, we've heard that again and again. Um, sales looks a lot like an action sport, folks. That's what we're hearing here. You know, mining, mining your pipeline and the people that you know. And I think that's that can be challenging for us DIs who really just want to be. We love prospecting sometimes. I know I always loved cold calling. I love the fizzbos, but the hand holding, like, oh, here you go. That wasn't always my. My wasn't always my thing. And so it does take practice. And like you said, uh, the follow up any, you know, what, what kind of technology or programs or software or staff would you recommend to help with that follow up? Is there a CRM you recommend? Do you have something within, you know, Sherry Johnson coaching, um, to help them with that follow up? Cause I mean, I agree. That's, that's where it's, where it's all at. Uh, we do actually, we do a skills assessment with every agent and we figure out what tools they're currently using, which tools are missing, what opportunities they're missing out on. Um, and we have a lot of partners that uh, we recommend. So um, whether you are using, you know, uh, Boomtown is, is a great partner. Um, uh, Real Geeks is another great one. There are so many great CRMs. You have to have a CRM and you have to use it and you don't have to get you know, stuck in the, in the details of it, um, because that is a time suck as well, but you have to have somebody on your team managing the CRM for you. Um, I would also recommend immediately jumping into video. You don't have to be, you, you can be a brand new agent and do video. <laughs> exactly. Do virtual seminars for home buyers, do virtual seminars for homeowners about how to get their house ready or what type of, uh, remodeling, uh, projects they're working on, what the highest ROIs are. Those people turn into listing leads. Okay. That we found this is, I used to do these in person. We're doing them virtually now. Uh, do videos of yourself, you know, and, and send those out on email. You don't, you have to have technology tools that show you are a modern agent. Okay. Right. The, the days, I'm going to say this, the days of walking in with a binder for a marketing presentation and calling it a listing presentation I mean, I never said listing presentation, even 25 years ago. So differentiate yourself and use tools that other people aren't. Um, it means having high technology tools, laptops, iPads, knowing how to use your phone as a, as a tool. Transaction management systems are great to help your efficiencies and help you close more deals. I'm doing a, a panel this afternoon on you know, what other options there are for people uh, to sell their home. You have to know what those are, even if you're not going to use them um, right. because you're competing against those competing people. Against and them. so it's really important to um, stay ahead of all the technology and make sure that you're going to events and, um, you know, don't get bogged down. Um, if you're a new agent, you need appointments, period. You know, you need appointments and then you can figure the rest out. <laughs> um, I always used to love people would say, well, I'm working on my listing presentation. And I'm like, but you don't have any appointments. So right. I'd rather you have like... <laughs> I'm getting ready to get ready. Right. You now, what you be freaking out about what you're going to set take, right? Let's give you appointments first. Then we can pick. So, but from the technology aspect, I think CRM, having a social media, um, you know, whether you sub that out or you are, you hire that person who can do both. Um, we have a great ad on how to hire social media. By the way, in, in 1998 or 99, I had a virtual assistant. And, you know, virtual assistant, probably, you know, this other guy in my office and I, we had virtual assistants back then. 
and you can, you know, well, state of the art back then. <laughs> it was, it was totally, but you know, make sure that you are using these tools and communicating them that your whatever your company is offering is a great start in marketing. You have to add what you do exclusively to use those tools. How do I exclusively attract more sh views on social media? And then talk about that at your listing presentation because no one else is. Right. Um, and so differentiating yourself with these tools, just having the shiny object tools is not going to cut it. You have to use them and display the value that they bring to why someone it's in their best financial interest to choose you to list their home with and, and sell their home. So I think they're all important. I also want to caveat and say, like, if you're a brand new agent, get business, you know, have an iPad, of course, have some kind of tablet and technology tools that you use. But like, you're you may, these are projects you're going to work on all the time. Right. But don't get stuck working just in the projects because you won't go out on appointments because I've seen that movie too. So you just got to, you know, get appointments. Number one priority for all of us is to prospect. Did I make any money today, J-Man? That's, this is, I've said this and pointed at my watch for, I don't know why, 30 years. Did right. I make any money? Because if I didn't, then I'm doing, I'm doing too much of something I shouldn't be doing. I'm not bringing right. in sales, I'm not bringing in my next deal. So, um, but all those technology tools help and they also bring with them efficiencies for a better client experience that you're going to give your, your customers. Well, and it's so true, right? We wake up unemployed every day. My pay becomes effective when I do. I always used to say that, like I got the best job in the world. I wake up unemployed every single day. Uh, but mm -hmm. if, if you look at video, you look at social media, if we were talking one year ago, if you guys tried to fight us, you'd be like, oh, I don't know about video, but if the last 12 months hasn't taught you the strength of video, you're watching this right now. Now on video, on social media, right. okay, so that works. But then also when you sit down with a client, you're doing the marketing presentation, like Sherry says, that's something that you can set yourself apart from the competition and then you can prove it. I can go into a listing presentation today and say, my video marketing strategy is second to none and here it is. <sighs> and they can't yeah. fake it, right? So powerful. It's, it's going to radically differentiate you from everybody and it's exclusive. Why? Because it's you and you said it was exclusive and no one else is doing it or communicating it that way. And that's, what's going to make, I, I think that'll make you successful immediately or continue your success for sure. Absolutely. So let, how can they get a hold of you? Let's give you a shameless plug here at the end, share it for, you know, website, awesome. all that. Yeah. Well, there's, um, we are launching, uh, the you rock, Real Estate Podcast with Sherry Johnson. It's happening Oh, I was right going to say, I rock. Thank you. Thank you so much. You do rock. Amen. You do. Um, that is it. Um, you can find us literally at sherryjohnson.com. Uh, we offer a free 30-minute strategy call, uh, free coaching, uh, and lots of content on our website that you can um, download. There are four on-demand webinars. One of those is the Goldmine Pipeline. I would suggest that be your first one. Um, that will that will double or triple your business, whether you hire us for coaching or not. Um, we are all about meeting you where you are. So if you're a new agent, we have tools and products for you. If you're an existing agent trying to grow your business and scale it, or if you also want to um, start or develop an existing team that you already have, uh, or if you're a broker uh, manager, sales manager, we have, uh, I don't know, 65 courses of, of content. All of it is available on the Sherry Johnson Academy, and we'd love to have a conversation with you about that. Um, I would say go to sherryjohnson.com, schedule your free call. You just pick the time and date uh, right there on the calendar. Um, hopefully I'll be the one to talk to you. Um, and we would love to have you follow us on Rockstars in Real Estate with Sherry Johnson Coaching on Facebook and that page. Uh, it's a uh, private group. We'd love to have you. Lots of great content in there. And um, I interview, you know, twice a month, I interview top agents from around the country. Those are always posted in there as well. And um, just be a part of our success and our success environment. Uh, we create results and everyone in our group is about helping, uh, helping agents just be the best that you can. That's what coaching is. You know, it's not making people right. great, bringing out the greatness they already have inside of them. And uh, I believe that's what we do. That's what we strive to do every day. And the results are fun. And we have agents that, you know, make $170,000 more in one year from, from our coaching. So it's a lot of fun. We are um, proud of what we're doing. Our coaching staff is great. And um, we'd love to 
get to know all of you. And uh, J-Man, thanks for having me. And I'd love to interview you on our Rockstar oh. interview. I'm going to have Thank you, you on. Thank you. So let's let's give her a shout out, everybody. Thank you, Sherry Johnson. We'll give you the DJ air horn. Then we're going to close it out with some applause here. This is so fun. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks. And thank you for tuning into the winner's table. Make sure... Next month, May, we're going to be right here. Same great place, same great channel, interviewing another real estate rock star. We're going to put all of Sherry Johnson's uh, information in the comments so that you can connect with her. And thanks for tuning in again, Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with the winner's table. Make it a great day.